actions. Verily, all praise is due to the Almighty Lord. We praise Him, we seek His aid, we beseech forgiveness to Him. We seek refuge of Allah Ta'ala from our evil souls and our evil actions. He whom Allah Ta'ala guides is rightly guided. And he whom Allah Ta'ala misguides, he will never ever find a protector, nor a guardian, nor anyone to help him to the right guide. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ I bear witness without any compulsion that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah Ta'ala, ascribing no partners unto him. And I bear witness and testify that our beloved Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger, the slave of Allah Ta'ala. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty Lord be upon him, his family, his companions, and every single one that follow their footsteps to the last day. Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari and Muslim ibn Hijjaj collected the hadith on the authority of Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhar Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the hour will not come to pass until the following events happen people will compete with one another in constructing high lofty buildings two big groups will fight one another and there will be many casualties. Earthquakes will increase. Time will pass quickly. Afflictions, killings will increase. There will be 30 Dajjal, 30 liars, all claiming to be the messengers of Allah Ta'ala. A man will pass by a grave and say, would that I were in that grave. The sun will rise from the west, and when it rises from the west, people will see this. And when they see it, they will believe. When the sun rises from the west, they will believe. But that day, the belief of that person, it will not benefit him if he believed not before, nor earned righteousness through his faith. And the rich man will worry lest he has no, no one to give his sadaqah to, his charity to. Another narration collected by Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal in his Musnad authenticated that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the hour will not come until knowledge will be taken away. Earthquakes will increase. Time passing quickly, tribulations will increase, and al hajj will increase. It was asked, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is al hajj He said, al qatl al qatl killing, killing. A lot of people are astonished by what the West has of materialistic power from various weapons, be it aircraft carriers, helicopters, be it missiles or bombs, be it satellite, tanks, advanced military equipment, power, guns, ammunition, nuclear power, as we are witnessing today, in the so-called coalition, the war against Islam. As we are witnessing today, the coalition, the war against Islam. Are these people not astonished by the power, the soldiers, the forces, the hosts of the Almighty Lord? Are they not astonished by the cyclones, the tornadoes, the thunderstorm, the lightning, the fire, the floods? 
the raging wind, the earthquakes, the earthquakes, one of the soldiers of the Almighty Lord, subjected only to his order. And no one, absolutely no one, knows the soldiers, the host, the forces of the Almighty Lord, except he himself. He causes the creatures fear in the hearts of whom he pleases. He punishes whom he pleases. He teaches lessons to whom he pleases. These earthquakes that are occur occurring, the increase of earthquakes. Open your eyes, Muslims. Open your eyes. The earthquakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Makes it clear to his servants, a plain reality, that the whole kingdom of the heavens and the earth is only, only in his hands and no one else. It's not in America or England or in the West or in Europe or in Saudi Arabia or in Australia. It's in the hands of the one that created these countries. وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُوْ And no one will know the force of the Almighty Lord except Him. No one will know the force of the Almighty Lord except Him. Yes, we are being watched. Yes, we are being looked at. Yes, we are being spied at. Yes, we cannot even look, talk, visit, travel, wear. We cannot even go to the toilet today unless that we are looked at by the kafar. What is the next step, they say? Yet, as Muslims, walillahi alhamd, we are afraid of only the one, the only one who created us and all humanity. And the one that gave him the ability to have the ability to do what they are doing, only for a short little time. And then Allah Ta'ala will give them their due proportion. أَمَرْنَا مُطْرِي فِيهَا فَفَسَقُوا فِيهَا فَحَقَّ عَلَيْهَا الْقَوْلِ فَدَمَّرْنَاهُمْ تَدَمِيرًا And when we decide to torment, to torture, to punish a nation, a town, a people, we first send our definite warning. Fear Allah Ta'ala and be righteous. Yet, if they then transgress therein, we will send to them our word of torment and then we will destroy them with complete destruction, with absolute complete destruction. The appearance of these earthquakes, dear creatures, there's a reason behind it, a reason which may be absent in a lot of people's minds. A lot of people's minds are too busy with the world too busy with materialism, servants of this life. Among the most established sunnah of Allah Ta'ala, understand this, understand this, open your ears. Among the established sunnah of Allah Ta'ala is that He does not send punishment on His slaves to anyone, only if it's due to sin and wrongdoing. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Whatever misfortune falls on you, befalls you, it is because of what your hands have earned. Every disaster, every calamity that befalls you, it is because of your wrongdoing. What caused Adam and Eve to be thrown out of paradise? Wrongdoing. What caused the people of Noah? to be drowned 
Everyone on that earth at his time, they were all drowned. Where the water reached the peak of the mountain. For undoing. The furious, violent wind upon the people of Ad. Where they were seen lying, overthrown and destroyed. As though they were hollow trunks of palm trees. For undoing. The awful cry upon the people of Thamud. The awful cry until it tore the hearts inside their chest. And then they all fell dead. Without exception. Wrong doing. Wrong doing the creatures. The lifting of the villages of Lot, those filthy people. That's when homosexuality originated. Allah lifted the villages until the angels heard the barking of their dogs. And then they twisted the land upside down and it fell onto them. And then rain and rain poured on top of them. Not rain of water, rain of stones. Alam nuhulik al awwalin. Thumma nutabi'uhum al akhirin. Did we not destroy the ancients? Did we not destroy the ancients? So we shall make the following generations, the latter generations, follow them. The earthquake that hit Turkey. Years back. The earthquake that hit Turkey. Why did it hit Turkey? Was it a natural disaster? Was it something normal? The earth is not right? It made a crack and an earthquake? It trembled? Wallahi, dear creatures, it is a soldier of Allah Ta'ala. That wicked government deserved it. Like a lot of other wicked so-called Islamic governments today. It is a warning to the people of Turkey. Specifically, as it is a warning to the people, the whole Muslims in all the lands generally, to return back to the Almighty Lord. To cry in repentance, to prostrate to Allah Ta'ala. And in your prostration saying, Oh Allah forgive me. Forgive me for my sin. It was a warning to see that brothers and sisters, the happy one in this life is the one that sees this with his own eyes and learns lessons, thus takes heed and prepares himself before it's too late. And the sad one is the one that sees these calamities in front of him. Look at the world today. We see problems everywhere. The world has united against us to fight Islam. Wake up. Be a Muslim. You are, you are a target whether you think you are or not. Wallahi, you are a target because you say, La ilaha illallah. And you will always remain a target as long as you say La ilaha illallah. <laughs> and when you say Kufr, you're not a target anymore. You won't be a target anymore. But if you want to be a Muslim, you are a target. So that incident that happened in Turkey and worldwide, these earthquakes. These are soldiers of Allah Ta'ala. وَمَا نُرْسِلُوا بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا تَخْوِيفًا وَمَا نُرْسِلُوا بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا تَخْوِيفًا We do not send our signs only as a warning. Only as a warning. And to make them fear, afraid of destruction. Allah warns us. So those people who are sad people, I say they are dumb people who are saying it's only a natural disaster. It's only a natural disaster. Wallahi, they are nothing but dumb people. They do not know the power of the Almighty Lord. But the day will come. If they deny this earthquake of being the soldier of Allah Ta'ala, their day will come, Wallahi al they cannot deny it. 
the day they, they it will come they will wish they said La ilaha illallah the day when they see the, the own, own very eyes that Allah has blessed them with since they were born they were looking and looking and looking but their eyes were closed and their heart is sealed and their ears is locked from the truth but the day will come when they will say Laytani Laytani I wish I wish but I wish on that day will not benefit that person if he believed not before nor earned righteousness for his faith the day when the earthquake will hit this world, this earth. The day when the earthquake will hit this earth. Ya ayyuhan nasu attaku rabbakum. Inna zalzalata saati shay'un azim. Yawma tarawnaha. Tudhalu kullu murdi'atin amma arda'at. Wa tada'u kullu dhati hamlin hamlaha. وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَى وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَى وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ O mankind, fear your Lord and be dutiful to Him. The earthquake of the hour is indeed a mighty terrible thing. The day you shall see it. The day you shall see it. Every nursing mother will forget her nursling. Every pregnant one will drop her load. You will see mankind as though they are in a drunken state. Yet they are not in a drunken state. But severe is the punishment of your Lord. A warning from the Almighty Lord, Allah Ta'ala, about this earthquake. Warning us, admonishing us. Beware! Just to listen now, but to prepare for it. Have we not admonished a beautiful surah? Noon, named Surah Al Zalzala. A whole surah in the Quran called the Earthquake, which gives a violent shake to all those drowsy hearts, warning humanity of the day of resurrection, the day when the earth, this earth that you are walking on, since you were born, you have been eating, sitting, sleeping, drinking, playing, joking, worshipping Allah Ta'ala on this earth, this firm earth. On that day it will tremble and quake and shake. And it will be a powerful blast. And it will make every single creature terrified. إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها. The day when the earth is shaken by convulsions. The final earthquake on this earth. زلزلة means to shake violently over and over and over again. And it's not just a limited portion of the earth, a small territory. No, it means the entire earth will shake. وأخرجت الأرض وأثقالها فس. After that. After the quake, it will spit out, throw out all its burden. Human beings, mankind, jinn, animals, they will all be thrown out. And this will be the resurrection. Allah Ta'ala reassemble the humans in their graves. He will make them exactly in the same shape and form as they were in this life. And this will be, as you all know, after the blow of the trumpet by Israfil and it's known to be the second blow of the trumpet known as the blow of revival and resurrection thus mankind will be resurrected from the life of the dead there are deniers out there of this time there are deniers out there that say no there is no such thing as resurrection they deny Allah's ability to turn our bones our dust into beings with feelings and senses. And without a doubt, this denial stems from the ignorance of the power of the mighty Lord. Glorified is He, our originator, our creator, our organizer, our fashioner, our designer, who created man from the first time, for the first time, out of nothing.
out of dust he created us. You know, how dare those infidels deny resurrection? Who created you, you idiot? How did you exist? From non-existence? Does non-existence have the ability to exist? Or to create? You know, how stupid is man? Muhammad ibn Khuzayma, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Sulaiman ibn al-Ash'af Abu Dawood collected a beautiful hadith that Muhammad sallallahu was asked, O oh Prophet of Allah, how does Allah give life to the dead? And what is the sign of that in his creation? Answer him very, very smart in a wise way. He said, have you not passed your family's barren river? And a barren river is a place where it's bare of vegetation. It's dead, there's no life in it. He said, yes, O Prophet of Allah. He said, have you not passed it again and found it to be full of life, green, fresh, alive? He said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. He said, likewise, Allah Ta'ala will give life to the dead. And this is a sign in His creation. The pagan Arab who is trying to play or mock or joke about Islam. He grabbed a bit of dust which was bones, decomposed bones. He said, Ya Rasulullah. Well, he didn't say Ya Rasulullah because he did not believe in him being Rasulullah. Because how will oh, Muhammad, how will Allah give life to this? How will he give life to this? In a state of mockery he was saying it. How? How? Muhammad said to him, he looked him in the eye. He will give life to this. He will cause you to die. Thus he will resurrect you and he will throw you in hellfire. وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِينَ كُلِ يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّ وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ خَلْقٍ عَلِيمٌ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّجَرِ الْأَقْدَرِ نَارًا فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ مِنْهُ تُوْقِدُونَ أَوَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بِقَادِرٍ أَنْ يُخْلَقَ مِثْلَهُ بَلَا وَهُوَ الْخَلَّاكُ الْعَلِيمُ He puts forth a parable. This man, he forgets his own creation and says, Who will give law to this? After it's been dust decomposed. Say, O Muhammad, Allah, He will give him life. He will give life to this. He will give life to this. The one who created it for the first time. The one who produces for us what? Fire from the green trees. Fire from the green trees. He is the one. Is not he who created the heavens and the earth. Able to create the like of them. Indeed he is. And he is the knower of all creation. Wala ilaha illallah. And we believe in that he creatures. We believe that He will give life just as He gave us life the first time. وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا When the man sees people being taken, thrown out of the earth, running here, running there, the earth shaking, trembling, quaking, the man will be astonished, bewildered, who we stand shocked, amazed, puzzled. What is happening to the earth? It's quaking underneath me. He will be shocked. Why? Because he will witness with his own very eyes. al The reality. He will witness al The overwhelming. He will witness al The happening. He will witness Yawm al-Maw'ud Yawm al-Maw'ud The promised day He will witness Yawm al-Khuruj The day of coming out And he will witness Yawm al-Qiyamah The day of resurrection As for those deniers They will witness Yawm al-Hasrah The day of grief Regret Remorse The day of sorrow They will witness for the first time What they regarded as the impossible that which will never happen. But this time, 
they are witnessing that which they thought will never ever happen but it's happening it is happening they'll be in a state of confusion bewilderment they'll be in a state of loss Wallahi brothers this is to be and they will say Malaha! what is it? what's the problem with it? what is happening to the earth? they'll be crying out as for the believing servants those that believed in the almighty Lord those that believed in that day what would they say? They'll witness all this that is happening to them on that day. But all of it to them is in accordance to their firm belief and conviction. They will say, Woe to us, to disbelievers, who has taken us, awaken us from our place of rest. I will say, this is what your Lord, the Most Gracious, has promised. And the Prophets, the Messengers, have spoken the truth. Did not Allah warn us? Why did Allah send Messengers? Why did He send Muhammad Sallallahu Isa, Musa, Nuh, Ibrahim, Adam? Why? As a joke, why has He sent teachers? Why has He made scholars inheritors of Prophets and Messengers? Why? So He can warn mankind. Well, when you were warned, you rejected. Brother, pray. No, I haven't got time. Brother, leave interest. No, leave me alone. Brother, do not do this. No, you're warned. That's why Allah sent messengers to warn mankind against evil. To warn mankind against this mighty day, which is to be, wallahi, to be. So on that day, let you be among those that say, Alhamdulillah alladhi anjana All praise is due to Allah who has saved me And not those that say Ya waylana, woe to us Ya hasratana, grief be upon us That will be the day the creatures And that was the day when the person will say Waqala insan ma laha And the person will cry out what is the matter with the earth? Yawma On that day, the earth, it will declare all its tidings. Anything that you had done on this earth, it will relate it. It's going to be either for you or against you. Whether it is murder, theft, robbery, uh, conspiracy, piracies in the land or in the sea. Oppression, illicit intercourse, backbiting, cheating, no matter what you did on this earth, you will be judged. Wallahi, the land, the earth that you are walking on, it will speak against you or for you on that day. If you pray today in Wiley Park or in Woodward Park, that park on that day, that portion, that section will speak for you and not against you. Yet if you go and steal someone, that section that you stole from, it will speak against you. So wherever you go, wherever you walk, wherever you look, whatever you do on this land, know that the land's got eyes. It is looking at you. And on a day of resurrection, it will have a mouth that it will speak with. And will speak either for you or against you. So wherever you go, wherever you go, you cannot hide. And know that wherever you go, I want this land to be for me and not against me. On that day they will declare everything. Just like our limbs will declare everything about us. Our limbs that we have borrowed and are using. The ones that our Lord owns. These hands, these eyes, this mouth, this tongue, this ear. Everything which you do not own but your Lord owns. Wallahi, you will be questioned. And that will speak and you just, rest. You, you just rest on that day. Your tongue will bear witness to what is said through it. Your hands, your legs will bear witness to what deeds you committed through them. Your eyes and ears will bear witness to what you saw and what you heard through them. Even your skin, Wallahi, your skin will bear witness either for you or against you. يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُ عَلَيْهِمْ 
The day when their tons and hands and legs will bear witness against them to what they did on this earth. And the man will say, the person will say, Why have you borne witness against me? I used you all this life. Why did you bear witness against me? And the limbs will say, The one that has made everyone speak has made me speak today. Has made me speak today. يَوْمَئِذِينَ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَالَهَا Because Muhal, the Lord has commanded it. It's Lord, the land, the earth has commanded it. So it's got no choice. It's not like whether it wants to be on your side or anyone else's side. No, there's no such fear on that day. It will speak whether it wants to speak or not because your Lord has commanded it. He commanded it to quake, to tremble, to shake and it did. He commanded to throw you out and it did. And he commanded it to relate everything that happened on it and it did and it will. وَإِذَا الْأَرْضُ مُدَّتْ وَأَلْقَتْ مَا فِيهَا وَتَخَلَّتْ وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُكَّتْ And when the earth stretches forth and casts everything that is in it, it becomes empty. And it listens and obeys the orders of its Lord and it must do so. يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ The day when man will proceed in scattered groups to be shown their deeds. They will proceed in scattered groups to be shown their deeds. خُشَّ عَنْ أَبَصَارُهُمْ يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ كَأَنَّهُمْ جَرَادٌ مُنْتَشِرٌ They will come with humble eyes from their graves as though they are locusts. spread abroad and we know locusts they usually stay together but at the same time they almost fight each other they hit each other because they, they have got they get they're dumb they're dumb insects so that when they hit each other they just fall down and mankind they have judgment they will come like that they'll be everywhere scattered everywhere naked uncircumcised barefooted as i should say ya rasulullah naked they'll see each other He said the affair is much, much more stronger on that day. How would they be? لِكُلِّ مْرِئِنِ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِي On that day, everyone will have enough to be careless of others. They will not care about their neighbor. Every single person on that day will be busy with his own problem. Am I going to live in eternal bliss? Am I going to live in eternal damnation? It's not an easy situation. It will be the greatest day that you will go through. It will be the gravest and the most fearful day. Why not when it's going to be? Man, a person's life will be decided on that day. It will mark a new beginning for each and every individual. And this new step will be either, like I said, eternal bliss. الله أكبر الله مجعلنا من هؤلاء أو إتان ودامنيشن. There's no third. It's either bliss, paradise, or it's either hellfire. There's no other way around it. There's no in between. And the unbelievers on that day, they will be in extreme grief when they know and they see that they have lost the everlasting life of bliss, of all the blessings of paradise. It will just increase their grief and their remorse and their sorrowness. When they see paradise in front of their eyes, but they're not going to enter paradise. And then they see the torment right in front of them. أو تكون حين ترى العذاب لو أن لي كرة فأكون من المحسنين. He should say the unbeliever when he sees the punishment, the torment. I wish I had another chance to go back to this earth. So I can be among the good people, the good doers. أو تقول نفس يا حصرة على ما فرطت في جنب الله وإن كنت لمن الساخرين. أو لست تشد شيء. أو grief to me. Woe to me. How undutiful, ungrateful I was to Allah Taala by not obeying His commands. And indeed, I was among those who mocked the Quran, the Prophet, and the faithful believers. And the faithful believers. 
and then he would start biting his hands. The kafir that day, creatures, brothers and sisters, the kafir that day will begin to bite his fingers, his hands, he will lose control. Wallah, he will lose control in a state of bewilderment. He will be confused, shocked, stunned. He will be lost. And he will say, as the verse says, وَيَوْمَ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَكُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَفْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَ يَا لَيْتَنِ لَمْ أَتَّخِفْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا لَكَدْ أَضَلَّنِ عَنَ الذِّكْرِ بَعَدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِ وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا The oppressor will bite his, at his hands as Allah says. He will say, wish! But wish is too late. Wish for what? Wish for what? After what? After you were warned and you rejected? Wish that I had taken a path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Woe to me! Would that I have not taken a path of so and so. Indeed he has misled me, he has led me astray from the reminder of the Quran. And Shaitan, who in reality led him astray, is ever a deserter to man in the hour of need. Is ever a deserter to man in the hour of need. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى And whoever does an atom's weight of good shall see it. And whoever does an atom's weight of evil shall see it. An atom's weight! You mean, subhanAllah, how insignificant, how trivial to us is an atom? An atom which is smaller than a particle of dust. And you cannot see, we are living now on earth. And around us there's billions of particles of dust, which we cannot see only if it is exposed to sunlight. Dust cannot be seen only if it is exposed to sunlight. And that atom is smaller than the dust. Even through the help of the most powerful microscopes in laboratories, we cannot see that dust, that atom. An atom, dear creatures, an atom. How small is that atom then? And that atom, whether it is itself or similar in weight, good or bad, will be folded in front of the man on that day and shown to him. Thus, if he's done good, he will receive good. And if he's done bad, he will receive that which he deserves. And there is nothing parallel or similar to it in measure in the life of this world except one thing. Nothing parallel or similar to this measure in this world except one thing. What is this thing? It's a beautiful thing which we must all have. It's the believing heart. The believing heart. For Wallahi, brothers and sisters, the believing heart is sensitive even to the atom's weight of good or bad. Even to the atom's weight of good or bad. In other words, a believer does not see anything insignificant. No matter how small the sin is, he fears Allah. He will keep away from it. He will keep away from it. And if it's good, even though it's an atom's weight, he will approach and do that. Good. As for some hearts in this world, some hearts in this world will not be touched, will not be moved, even if they are touched by a mountain of sin and crime. Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi mentions to us a beautiful hadith on the authority of Adi that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to us fear Allah Ta'ala, fear the hellfire even if it is or if it were by giving a portion, a small portion of a date small portion of a date, how easy is that? how easy is giving one sense? a small portion of a date or by saying a good word and he said, do not despise any act of kindness, any act of kindness, even if it were by filling the drinking vessel of a thirsty person from your bucket, or meeting your brother with a smile. And he mentions in a hadith collected by Bukhari likewise, rahmatullah O oh, oh, community of believing women, the woman neighbor should not despise her woman neighbor. Even if she gives her a sheep's trotter. And a sheep's trotter is like the foot. The one that she trots on. That basic thing which is nothing. It's trivial. But she might either go to paradise because of that. 
or by committing sin, even though it's trivial, insignificant, that might lead her to hellfire. So as we see the creatures, this sort of really should blast our hearts. And not only do we take it in the sense of it's just another sort of, take every sort of the Quran with recognition, understanding, implementation and preparation for what that sort of prepares and warns us against. Akulu ma tasma'oon. واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه غفور رحيم. Just before we answer any questions, approximately two minutes, inshallah ta'ala, we won't take much of your time up. <coughs> As you can see, uh, we've got a, a new brother in Islam beside me. His name is Sean. He's been at, uh, in Islam only for two weeks. He is Cuban origin, walillahi alhamd. And before Islam, he was more like an atheist, believed in nothing. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enlightened his heart and blessed him and taken him out of darkness into light and inshallah ta'ala on the path of paradise and thus enters him it. We ask Allah ta'ala to increase his faith, increase the brothers in Islam and the sisters in Islam. And we ask Allah ta'ala to help Sean to be guided to the path that he loves most and the path that he is pleased in most. Let us hear what Sean has to say. To all of us, insha'Allah, let us lend our ears to him for about two minutes. May Allah bless us and bless him, insha'Allah. Sorry, man. Assalamu alaikum, brothers. Uh, um, I've been a uh, Muslim now for two weeks and um, started off with just uh, many Muslim brothers and slowly learning about everything and being introduced to the faith. I didn't have faith before. And everything I liked about it, the brotherhood, the unity, or all, all the scriptures, I, I learned more about it, and and I made the step, I made the big step to choose that I wanted to be Muslim. And from now on, I'm slowly learning, learning from other brothers, and um, from my wife. Now I'm learning slowly how to be a better Muslim, how to be a better person. And yeah, if you can just Help me, help me, help. I'm, I don't know anything. I'm, I'm a blank sheet of paper now, and I'm willing to learn. So if you, if you have any, if you want to talk to me about anything, and just willing to learn. Assalamu alaikum. Zakallah khair ya Akshan. Our new brother in Islam. How nice is it to see you next to us as a brother. Well, Sean actually attended lessons here before he was a Muslim. Correct, Sean? Yes. Okay. And uh, he was inspired by, as he mentioned, the brotherhood. And subhanAllah, it's, uh, it's the reality. You know, you can see the brotherhood of the Islam. There's nothing like it. There's no comparison. Just like, as we mentioned earlier on, there's no comparison to that little atom. No parallel or similar thing to it. Likewise, the brotherhood of Islam. You know, you got the brotherhood of infidels. But what kind of brotherhood is that? Huh? What kind of brotherhood is that? You know, of the infidels. عَلَيْهِمْ مَا يَسْتَحْقَاتَ لَهُمُ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Inshallah, that is their brotherhood, that they fight each other and they wipe each other off this earth. Is there anything else, Sean, that you would like to mention? Inshallah. Inshallah, one day I wanna, we want to hear a lesson from you. And you'll be teaching us, huh? May Allah bless us and bless you, inshallah, Sean. A question here from the sister. What is the aura between females? What is the aura between males? Are men permitted to wear tight fitting, fit, fitted clothing? As for the first one, what is the aura between females? There's a big dispute amongst the scholars of this. Or about this topic, a big dispute. Some have said that everything is aura except the hands and the face. Or the place that you beautify yourself with, which is the adornments. Like they said, a lady in front of a Muslim lady, she's allowed to uncover her hair, she's allowed to show the, her arms, she's allowed to show her feet, her shin, but not beyond that. But not beyond that. Another saying, 
They say, some scholars, that the order for a lady in front of a lady is between the navel and the knees, just like a man, a man's aura is, which is between the navel and the, ne navel and the knees. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. As long as the lady is in front of a lady, she's allowed to show everything except the private parts. And the private part is, wallahu alam, is between the navel and the knee for a lady in front of a Muslim lady. As for the man, it's the navel, between the navel and the knees. A man is allowed to show other than that position or that part between the navel and the knees. So in other words, if you want to walk around without a shirt, a man, you can walk around without a shirt as long as below the navel is not showing. That is allowed. Whether you walk in front of a lady or a man, but at the same time you've got to play it wise. And you don't go in front of a crowd of women and try to show your 17 inch biceps and, <laughs> you know, and your shoulders, shoulder, you know, pads and so forth. So you've got to play it wise and smart. But that is the situation that a man's aura is between the navel and the knees. The navel itself, the knees itself is not the aura and understand that. It's between the two parts. Are men permitted to wear tight fitted clothing? If that is meant by tight, for example, 501 jeans which can show every part of your body, no. That is not allowed. Or any kind of other pants that is very tight to the extent where your body is actually shaped. Shaped. Meaning there is no loose or roomy you know, part of the body. It's just, in other words, when you wear jeans, they tuck the shirt in and you can see the 28 inch waist and then you can see the thighs where it's just round, everything shaped, especially when you're in prayer. You are not allowed to pray in that position nor are you allowed to wear such tight clothes. In other words, a man should not wear tight pants if he wants to wear trousers, he's allowed to wear trousers. If it's over his ankles or not below his ankles, it's got to be roomy, roomy, whereby if you look at you, you do not know the size of your thighs or the waist and so forth. And it's got to be untransparent. And that's pretty understandable, I think. But those that pray with trousers and they're tight, especially when you bow down, that is not correct Islamically. You should not pray with trousers if they're tight. In other words, not tight just by standing, but when you bow down, if they're tight and they can actually can feel the tightness of them, it's not acceptable. Islamic is an authentic narration in Sahih Bukhari in regards of this. It says, if you got such wear, such dress, then wear a loin cloth or a syringe or anything that is baggy. Wear a shirt that goes down to your thighs down to your knees, that is more appropriate for a man's dress. That is more appropriate for a man's dress. As for those that like to show their waistline and so forth, just be careful. You know, especially after you're married, there's no longer need for that kind of stuff, even before you're married. You know, you've got to be very careful. You have a lot of fit now out there today. Not only from the ladies' section, but the men's section. How many evil is out there? Some scholars have mentioned that the aura <clears throat> for the man is not the thighs, for example. But the majority of scholars say that even though it's not, an, it's not the aura, which is, is the authentic narration testified that it is, that you should still cover it so there will be no fitna, no affliction on behalf of men and women looking at you. So a man should always play it wise in his dress, let his clothes be baggy, and let his uh, clothes be not below the, gar below the ankles, and likewise a lady, let her clothes always be baggy from head to toe and uncovering nothing in front of strangers except her face and her hands. And make sure that you do not wear anything tight, especially for the ladies. You do not go out with a skirt or jeans outside the house. Try your utmost ability to cover as much as possible. As much as possible. Tadah is uh, to do with the ladies, uh, they wear stockings. They make with with the stockings on. 
Is a lady allowed to wipe over her stockings when she performs the wudu? In other words, she is allowed to wear, wipe over the socks, correct? Socks. She's allowed to wipe over socks, correct? She is allowed. With one condition, which is? She wears them on wudu. The other condition is that she does it in the time that she's been given, the, the limited time or the restricted time that she has been given. If she's wearing the stockings, there is a difference of opinion on this matter. Some scholars said it is allowed, no matter how transparent they are, as long as they're called socks and stockings are socks. She is allowed, others said no, if the sock or the stocking is transparent, it is not allowed to wipe over men or women. The scholars, some scholars have said, if the socks is transparent, you can see through it, you can see the color of the skin, you are not allowed to wipe over them. So to be out of this doubt, let them wear and let yourself wear a sock that is not transparent. So if it is transparent to be on the safe side, she should not wipe over them. Other, otherwise, she is allowed.